All right, this is a quick video to show you how to customize your calories and figure out how much heavy cream, avocado oil, MCT oil, whatever it is that you want to use to do keto chow. So the first thing you're going to want to do is come to the how to prepare keto chow page. And at the top, there's a video that just quickly shows how to make up a, a sample's worth of keto chow. And if you scroll on down, there's more detailed instructions. There's this big giant blue button. So what you're going to want to do is click on the big giant blue button and it will load the Keto Chow Calorie Customizer. If you happen to know how many calories you want in a day, you can go ahead and type that in. That could be 2,000 calories, it could be 1,500 calories, any number that you want to put in there. If you don't know how many calories you want to use in a day, uh, there's this link right here to the Keto Calculator to get your details. This takes you over to a site where you're able to put in your information. So let's just make up a hypothetical person. We're going to make a female that weighs 150 pounds, is 5 foot 6, and was born in, we'll say, 1980 on October 28th. Why not? Uh, this is to get how old you are. They don't care about your actual birth date. Um, then to determine your energy expenditure, um, I absolutely recommend just selecting sedentary. Don't worry about anything else. Um, all these other things, can, uh, you can, it can take care of itself when you uh, are tracking that if you want to but I would just recommend sedentary. Um, body fat, it will calculate your body fat for you. And in this case, it's assuming 35%. Um, you can get a DEXA scan or do a skin fold measurement. Uh, if you don't know any better, if you haven't gone ahead and gotten any of those more in-depth measurements, just go ahead and go with what it assumes is the right number, which it, in this case is 35. Then, when it talks about your macronutrient ratio, okay, so a lot of this information here um, isn't going to, we're not going to be using this, but it's, it's a good starting point. It's recommending 25 grams. Um, I absolutely recommend lower than 20. And the thing about macronutrients, about how many carbs can you eat, notice that's an emphasis on the can, not should. Carbs is an upper limit, not a target that you should go for. Um, this is a maximum. You want to stay under this. Protein is a should, and that's based on some other stuff. Um, Protein is a, a goal to work towards, but isn't something that you absolutely have to hit. Um, if you're eating just keto chow by itself, then you may need to increase the amount of protein that's in keto chow. But if you're eating other food, say you're only eating um, keto chow twice a day, or you're eating it uh, once a day, your other meals more than likely are going to have the right amount of protein, um, if in doubt. Put it all into a tracking um, thing. Ooh, I can hide that. Yes. Um, so on this, based on your personal data, you should stay above 59, and you can go as high as 97. And in this case, it's saying choose the middle ground. That For you, that's 78. So I'll just go ahead and I'll just type in 78. For most people, Keto Chow is going to give you a fairly good amount of protein about what you need and the way it's basing these off of the minimum is 1.3 grams of protein per kilogram of lean body mass which is the same as 0.6 grams per pound and you'll notice it doesn't talk about percentages percentages it, that's the sort of thing you use when you are doing a, um, a ketogenic diet in order to in order to control epilepsy um, when you're doing a nutritional ketosis diet, um, you don't want to use percentages. You want to use absolute numbers in grams. 
Um, so 78 grams would be 1.8 grams per, kilogr per kilogram, and 97 grams would be 2.2 grams. And that's based off of the 35% body fat that you entered up here. Because it says with 35%, you have 44 kilograms of lean body mass. Okay, great. And if you want to know that for sure, you get a DEXA scan. So, now how much fat should you eat? And this is key. Eat fat to your liking. Fat is to satiety. You don't have to hit fat. You go up to there. It's a, uh, yeah, fat to satiety. So, um, and the way that this is calculated is how much of a deficit you want to run based on how many calories a day you need and how many calories a day you're going to eat. I recommend never going below 15%. That is the highest you should ever enter into here um, because when you go higher than 15%, your body is going to know that you're running too high of a deficit. And instead of losing more weight, it will compensate by shutting down non-essential bodily functions like hair growth and fingernail growth and things like that. Um, you'll get cold. Well, you'll get cold anyway as you start to lose weight, but you'll get even colder. So never put anything below 15. In doubt, just put 15 or 10 or another number, but here I'm going to enter 15. So and they're saying this is an average deficit. This should easily be sustainable. Okay. So for our hypothetical person who is a, uh, a female, um, I'm trying to remember all the, all this stuff. Um, but yeah, so th it's recommending 1,219 calories of daily intake. 20 grams of carbs, 78 grams of protein, and 100 grams of fat. Again, I can't emphasize this enough. You do not have to hit 100 grams of fat. You don't also, you come close to 78 grams of protein. If you're only eating keto chow, then you would maybe need to add additional protein to keto chow in the form of protein powder. Um, but most people are going to instead eat a steak or some chicken breasts, or just have a meal that contains protein in order to get that. Um, it's only if you're if you're doing just keto chow for all your meals a day that you would need to exactly hit that. Um, then there's additional stuff. Um, it does give you ratios here and how many calories that would be going at. And it says for weight maintenance, you need 1,518. Again, this is this particular lady. If we were to go up to the top and change it to a male who weighs 200 pounds and is six foot one, well, it completely changes everything. It's assuming a 27% body weight, I mean body fat, still the same 20 grams of, carbo of carbohydrates. Um, this guy wants 117 grams of protein. The same 15% deficit, it says that you want 1,757 with 117 grams of protein. Okay, so it's, it's a very personal result. It depends on your height, your weight, your age, your gender, all that sort of stuff. But once you get the, the figures that you want, so that was 1,200 and, oh, well, I'll just put it back in here. I think 150 female five foot six okay oh I need to change the uh, the protein back <laughs> your protein is too high <laughs> okay we'll put that back to 88 um, oh need to put this back to 35 okay so we're back to our lady um, we're back to our 78 grams of protein 1,290 kilocalories, 78 grams of protein. So I'm going to come back over here and type 1290. It's going to calculate per meal to be 430. If you use the peanut butter, it changes some of the equations because peanut butter has a little bit more fat, protein, and carbs. 
To make it easy on myself, I'm going to use the unit of measure of milliliters. There's no round, there's no, con, uh, it's just easier for me, okay? So, to hit 430 calories per meal of almost all the flavors of keto chow except for uh, peanut butter, and if you want to do that, you just check this box, I'm going to use 88 milliliters of heavy cream per meal. And it's just showing heavy cream because I only have heavy cream in here. Um, if I wanted to use some oil, I could just keep on moving this over until I get it to about where I want. And this is all oil. It's, we're, we're talking about avocado oil. We're talking about MCT oil. If you really want to use olive oil, you could use that. I wouldn't recommend many other oils besides avocado oil and MC oh, and uh, sorry and light tasting avocado oil. Oh wow, I'm really messing this up. I wouldn't recommend anything except for avocado oil and or light tasting olive oil. You can use MCT oil, but that is not required, nor is it recommended when you're first starting out. I'll talk about that in just a bit. But if you do want to use oil, you can just slide this over and get it to whatever percentage you want. Um, the more oil you use, the fewer carbohydrates there will be. And if you scroll on down a little bit, you can see macronutrients per meal. And you can see the net carbs changing as I'm moving the slider back and forth from all heavy cream to all oil. If you do want to use MCT oil, MCT oil is medium chain triglycerides. It's an interesting type of oil. It's made from refined coconut oil and they're just taking the shorter, well medium chains, uh, of carbon atoms. Um, if you really want to get into it, it's uh, chains of 8 versus um, 10 or so on and so forth, um, chains of, avoc uh, of avocado oil, of carbon. Um, and N MCT oil is unique in that your liver will process it directly into ketones. So it will raise your ketone levels if that's what you want. Raised ketone levels does not make you lose weight any faster but it will give you mental, more mental clarity and it will um, help your energy levels. Um, it's a good alternative to adding avocado oil because it is a saturated fat and it works really well for ketosis. So if you're adding oil anyway, you can add MCT oil in place of some of the oil that you're looking to add, you know, the avocado oil, but it's not a requirement and it's not recommended when you're first starting off. And the reason for that is MCT oil can be a little hard on your digestive system and it will, it can cause, well, the runs, to be quite frank. The, uh, the specific scientific term is disaster pants if you use too much. The maximum you'd ever want to use is 15 milliliters, which is a tablespoon. And I would recommend working your way up to that that's a tablespoon in each meal of keto chow. So let's, let's take the example that you wanted to use a teaspoon of MCT oil. That's right around five milliliters. So in, with our hypothetical lady here, I can move this back and forth until I get it really close to 15 milliliters of oil. Okay, there we go. So in this case, I would be using 10 milliliters of avocado oil, five milliliters of MCT oil, and 53 milliliters of heavy cream. That's pretty easy. Um, or I could move this over a bit more until I get it up, the number amount of oil up to 20, because 15 milliliters is a tablespoon. So now I'd be using a teaspoon of MCT oil, a tablespoon of avocado or olive oil, and then right around 40 milliliters of heavy cream. It's actually really easy to find small measuring cups that will do milliliters. Um, makes measuring this sort of stuff very, very easy. So in, here you'll have your net carbs per meal, your protein per meal, and your fat per meal. And the protein per meal is gonna pretty much stay almost the same, except that it will, um, 
go up a little bit more if you're using more heavy cream, down a little bit more if you're using more avocado oil. And if you go with all oil, it's a fun little thing that the protein goes down and the fat comes up because, well, protein uses, it, it contains calories. So once you've got the amount of heavy cream and or oil that you're going to be using, you probably want to write it down so that you can put this into your, you know, your recipe, your tracking, things like that. And if you're not getting enough protein per meal, that's okay. Or if you're getting too much protein per meal. If you're getting too much protein per meal, then your body's just going to not have to scavenge as much for protein to build new structures. Um, and you'll probably just have a little bit more energy. Um, if you don't get your fat macro, that's okay. Your body will adjust, and what will happen is, is that you'll, you'll, you'll just use up more stored fat to a certain extent, as long as you're not getting much more than a 15% deficit per day. So it's, it's usually wise to get kind of close to this, but you don't absolutely have to. And if you are not hungry, then you may want to lower the amount of fat you have in per meal anyway. But once again, your protein, okay, so net carbs is a limit. It is not a goal. You want to limit your net carbs to under the 20 grams. You actually want this as low as humanly possible. Uh, 0.43 grams of net carbs per meal is the lowest I personally have ever seen um, nutritionally complete keto done at. Um, I, and that's probably because I haven't experimented very much with a carnivore diet where all you're eating is meat. But even on a meat-only diet, there still is some glycogen that is in the muscle that you're eating. And so 0.43 is probably as low as you can get, maybe 0.4 if you're on a strictly carnivore diet. And they call that zero carb, by the way. Um, and so if you, if you could do a, uh, uh, you know, 0.43 a meal times three and be at less than a gram and a half of net carbs per day, you would really be rocking it. You don't have to hit 20. That's how much you can. I don't think I've stressed that enough, but I'm gonna stop. So, and again, if you need more protein, you can add, uh, flavored or unflavored protein powder to keto chow. You can simply eat some tuna fish or some salmon or a steak or some chicken if you need to get your protein up. Um, I would not, there are a lot of people who think they should add a bunch of heavy cream because it does contain some protein. Heavy cream is primarily fat. So don't do that. Don't add heavy cream to get your protein macro up. Anyway, that is how to use the calorie calculator to figure out how much heavy cream and or avocado and MC2E oil if you really want to. Then you can use that when you go to actually do the mixing. Have a nice day.